Hey everyone, we are back for another video, and this time we will be playing Blazing Chrome, and by we, I mean with me as always is Corey. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going, guys? Just to let you guys know, I've not practiced this game much at all. We're using Steam Remote Play together between the uh, long distance of our connection here and internet not being as great as it could be in some parts of the world. There's some massive lag that Corey will have to deal with. And for those new to our channel, the reason that you might be interested in watching our kind of Let's Play or First Impressions videos isn't because we're great game players, but it's because we're both professional pixel artists and have also both done professional game design. So we really come at it from just talking about the kind of ideas and decision making that was going on during the makings of the game and talking sometimes about how things could have been done differently and what the effects would have been. So let's dive in. I used to play hardcore console games back in the day all the time. And this game is clearly very strongly influenced by Contra Hardcore for the Mega Drive, not just in overall design and gameplay, but the graphics as well. It really looks like they're using the um, Mega Drive color bit depth, it's called. like the Yeah, uh, working with it uh, as much as I have on Damon Claw and stuff, I, I noticed that right off the bat. I believe that they are they worked hard to follow that. I, from what I know, I thought they were doing an actual port of this for Mega Drive, and I don't know if that's still in the works or if it, you know, was released. Uh, I know this came out a little while ago. Yeah, so. over three years ago, I think. But yeah, that was um, it's a question I had because they came really teasingly close to following the actual hardware limitations of the Mega Drive, mm -hmm. uh, but in some ways they did not. So right. one yeah. thing that I did notice, if you look at the back scroll, the back layer, all that parallax scrolling. Mm -hmm. It is very mostly like they would have done it back in the real uh, Genesis slash Mega Drive days, where they actually only had one back layer they could make with the Mega Drive hardware. Uh, so there's the regular foreground layer and then a back layer, and to get more parallax, they would slice up the back layer um, so that it would be all of these kind of horizontal strips going across the screen, that would all scroll at separate speeds, but if you look carefully in this game under uh, certain circumstances, there's actually an overlap of graphical detail, like the tops of skyscrapers and the lower layers overlap the uh, graphics of the other layer on top. Mm -hmm. So it mostly, it comes really close, but there's like a few yeah. pixels of cheating. Um, yeah, I noticed, like, I, yeah. I couldn't help but notice that I, I didn't look as much in this level since I was first playing it, yeah. but there's, I noticed it some in, the, like, uh, a couple of the other levels, but right. you're right, it's close enough where they could get away with making it look pretty close. Yeah, you know, exactly, yeah, like, this level, it would look to, to the average person, uh, at a glance, it would look virtually identical. The other thing, they might have to reduce the amount of... Uh, particles, sort of, with the explosions and stuff, or it might get a little flickery. Right. Like, this yeah. game suffers no flicker it's because heavy. it's... No yeah, exactly. But back in the day, if, if you had over a certain amount of sprites per scan line, uh, you'd start getting some pretty nasty flickering. And in two-player mode with a lot of explosions, it looks like you'd end up with some pretty bad flickering, which could be bad if enemies or enemy bullets weren't visible. <laughs> you know, right. that's really bad for the, this kind of game. Yeah, and I am not used to these controls yet at all. I don't even know how to get up that high. I don't either, <laughs> uh, unless there's a power-up that allows it that I haven't yeah, I seen don't, yet I don't or know. something. But yeah, you'll see like a few of the antenna or bits of broken debris of that mid uh, layer up there are right. um, overlapping the other detail of the previous layer, but it's super subtle. So there is a nice thing that was also the same in some of the 16-bit Contra games. If you hold the right shoulder button, it'll lock the uh, character in place. I enjoyed this little segment uh, with the helicopter guy or whatever. Oh yeah, and then we've got the kind of neck suit thing. I forget how you get in it. You jump, I guess? Yeah, you just jump on top yeah. of it. Yeah. 
So yeah, this right here, this would really, really tax the Mega Drive. Right. Because yeah. that helicopter would have to be made out of sprites, and that's a, an insane amount of sprites along with the players and uh, everything else going on. Yeah, I noticed, um, and I, I can't recall if the Mega Drive is capable, but there's like some sprite rotation and stuff going on exactly, a decent yeah. amount, and I don't. No, not by I default. I don't think that's possible. I know it was yeah. on the Super Nintendo, but... Uh... Yeah, the Sega CD had a custom, like, special bit of hardware in it that could do scaling and rotating. Uh, but obviously, I don't know if they made... I think it also had, like, some kind of helper processor so that it could do more on-screen things without really chugging or flickering as much. I'm not positive with right. that, but it definitely had scaling and stuff. But that's a great point. Um... And they did mimic, like, how classic console would do the scaling. You could see how chunky the those flying enemies are as they appear big and then get smaller as they arrive in the actual same distance as the players and stuff. Right. Um, if that makes sense. And what's funny, when I first saw that, I thought, one, they're kind of doing it arbitrarily to, to keep this game looking as retro as possible because they've got plenty of memory and they could just have the giant size version in memory as well and scale that down. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the funny thing I was going to say is, in the case of the Neo Geo, which was known for its great scaling abilities, what most people don't know is that the Neo Geo could only shrink things, but luckily had a lot of memory. Like, the average cartridge was big, and there, there was just more memory to play with in general so if you wanted scaling in your game on the neo geo you always had the art for everything are you still connected there yeah okay yeah yeah Yeah, that is something i noticed that i was going to say i disliked that when we arrived at a hallway with no enemies and we were supposed mm -hmm. to just walk off screen to the right but there was no arrow prompt telling us so we were just sitting there for a while waiting for something to happen and that just happened yeah, to well, us again and I think the reason it threw me off is, um, like, you, your characters just stop everything they're doing when you defeat, like, a boss or something. Yep. Yep. And so it doesn't, it, there's oh, did no I get character my controls animation back? at all yeah, that exactly. lets you know you got, yeah, it's time to go, yeah. yeah. I mean, the arrow would be a good way to do it, but also just... Yeah. The characters stay stiff uh, during yeah, that exactly. time, you know. So. And what we did in uh, Damon Claw for those kind of things, where if you're, if you temporarily, even for a split second, lose controls for some kind of cinematic or something, uh, we do the letterbox thing, where the black bars come in on the top and bottom, to let you know those cinematic moments when you don't have control, and then you know when those black bars are going back up and you're getting back to the full screen that it's time to get back in control of your character. Right, yeah. I do find, like, even with this Ouchie. lag, the yeah. game seems... Playable? Well, that's a, a little better with two people, for sure. I oh, would, yeah, definitely. I would, definitely. Yeah. I definitely lost more lives, pathetically enough, um, in one-player mode when I did a little practicing. All right, let's pick the second easiest. Yeah, that, that one's tough. Whew. Right. I that's the one I haven't tried yet that tower. Yeah, me neither. I find it interesting that, you know, this is like the other side of the train. Exactly. Right? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, they they trick you and they say, well, the train's more difficult than this level, but it's yeah. supposed to be it's not the the chronological order. Yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, yeah. at the same time, um, it makes me wonder if they designed it to be that way at first, and then they eventually did the level select thing after, you know? Yeah, that's a great great point. Uh, yeah, I'm careful of sinking into that quicksand there. Um, I think I noticed uh, they kind of took some inspiration from Gunstar Heroes too. I think when you get close to an enemy, you'll do an actual physical like melee attack instead of. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a great gameplay mechanic in a game like this. It's the old risk versus reward thing where 
if you take the risk of getting right up against, like, really close to an enemy, you could do a stronger, uh, dam a, a better damaging attack against them. Right, yeah. Thank you for feeding that sandworm so I could shoot <laughs> it in the mouth. That was helpful. You see that mm -hmm. uh, right there, This what we're right in front of? That's not just sliced. There's two layers of mountain right over each other back there. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this was the level, like, I, I found playing, you know, myself, <laughs> um, I found level one to just be a nice, like, it was, it just felt right, every bit right. of it, the progression and everything, and this yeah. one, like, I did this one second, yeah, the difficulty, and it just, yeah. the difficulty goes up, and it also doesn't have the same pacing to it or something, uh, yeah. so it feels very different. Uh, by comparison, but yeah. In other words, not as smooth as a difficulty curve as one might like to, uh, you know. Especially these days, most players aren't used to the kind of super hardcore console gaming back in the day, where they just, yeah. it, you know, it was brutal. Games were designed like, yeah, you're gonna die a ton, and the only way you're ever gonna beat this game is if you suck it up and keep practicing until you have like incredible memory and muscle memory of the entire game. Yeah, and this this game is definitely no fault to this game. That's definitely the kind of thing they were going for. Like yeah, said, I, their yeah. their influence was definitely contra hardcore or the strongest influence. Well, I, a good example of you know one of those things that it's like that guy right there. Okay, yeah. the average troop that comes in yeah. instead of just firing a bullet and then moving and doing something else, they fire like three bullets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they get a chance, they fire three in a row, uh, which yeah. is like a little. I don't know. It feels like they shot one at first, and then they were right. like, oh, it's not hard enough. And so they just added more bullets. <laughs> right. <laughs> and added more shots. Which, which could, again, make the uh, Mega Drive port even more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, a great way to adjust the difficulty is to, like, <clears throat> give the players more effective body armor in the uh, in an easier mode so you, it's not, like, one-hit deaths. I think this right. is one-hit deaths like the Contra games tend to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Classic elevator. Yeah, you're right. Like, that three, always three bullets in a row makes it way harder to dodge or stay ducked. Like, if you duck, you have to stay ducked for too long because you're under a stream of bullets all the time instead of yeah, just letting one bullet uh, pass overhead. I think they're overhead. trying to, you know, Oopsie. like, promote using the rolling or whatever, but... Oh, I, yeah, I it, forgot that exists. <laughs> exactly. I don't instinctively ever think to do it too often because yeah. I think because so much of the game relies on being off the ground or yeah. jumping and stuff that you yeah. you don't... Um, it's yeah. Plus not too many yeah. Moving so quickly and semi uncontrollably, con uncontrollably in a game like this also is quite dangerous on its own. Right. So the role is yeah, not as intuitive. Um, but I like the fact that they did add it. I just have to really get used to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and without being uh, you know too overly negative gameplay wise, uh, yeah. like like I. I do appreciate the the look and feel of the game overall. Like it, yeah. it definitely, if you were to uh, say that, if you, like if it had the Contra label, that this would count. You know, it, yeah. it would compete with the best of those Absolutely. games. Absolutely, this game is so. in gameplay design, in sound, in graphics. Nothing about this is lower quality than any AAA game by the big studios back in the day. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. absolutely. Oh, that was nice, getting webbed up and shaking or shooting out. I assume it was shaking. Uh, I instinctively kind of wiggled my controller. Oops. Oh, that was weird. I thought I got hit, but I must have not been paying close enough attention, but I thought I got hit by one of the web uh, projectiles, and right. it killed me, but I guess one of the green shots was also there, and I didn't <clears throat> even notice. Yeah, I was, I was... Oh, yeah, oh... Getting the a tail. lot of lag in a row, so I just couldn't. I just kept dying. The but, tail of the green shot. I wonder if there's like a bomb, like in Contra, like a desperation. I don't see it on the interface. You know how the Contra games would have like a desperation bomb. 
Yeah. I'm not sure what just happened there. Oh, game over. Okay, it, there was a timer. This level's really nice, but again, there's no way the Mega Drive could do this because there's one extra layer, complete right. layer of scrolling. Um, yeah, I think they would just have to, like, what I would do if I was porting this game is you take the layers that you would notice it the least and just combine them into yeah. one scrolling layer. So a bit less parallax, but keep the graphical detail the same. The other option is to change how you're parallaxing things and rely on the slicing, because the Mega Drive does have a really cool feature where it can, like most consoles, you could slice the screen hor into horizontal, or I should say vertically you could slice the screen, you know what I mean, yeah. to get the typical, like, like you see in Sonic the Hedgehog and saw in the first level of this game, but it could also do that in vertical strips and scroll them at different speed, and in some of the Shinobi games, uh, they put really good use to that for like when you're falling down a canyon on stones and, and the falling stones and stuff like that. I'll see if I could splice in some footage of that. Um, and you could do a level like this where you're going down this like elevator shaft type thing. Um, you could do something that looks really cool with tons of parallax, but it would be, again, parts of the screen being in these very specific columns or rows. Uh, you know, with sort of seams, you know what I mean? Uh, instead of just actually being able to have as many layers as you want, or three layers instead of two. I think, you know, since the any porting, I guess, came after, I think yeah. they had that idea in mind of just, well, let's make this version. It'll be very retro, but it can do what it needs to do. Yeah. And then for the other versions, you know, we'll, like any compromises needed, we do that. Um, yeah, no pun intended. What's that? I, I was just saying, no pun intended, but we're going the more hardcore approach with Damon Claw, where even right. though we're developing it at first for modern platforms, because we know we're going to port it to Mega Drive and eventually also 16-bit uh, Amiga computers and hopefully other uh, retro consoles, we're very painstakingly making sure we understand and abide by the technical constraints of the Mega Drive. I think we're going to get stuck on this level too much, uh, so we might as well just switch over to the Let's Play video. Okay, we are back now relying on a Let's Play video, so a special shout out to Static Sphere. So let's dive in. We didn't, I don't think, see and didn't comment on the full intro, so we might as well look at that first. To me, like, first off, the art is, is really well done, and, it, yeah. um, and I like that it has enough different shots of the characters and stuff so yeah. you know displays them very well good intro yeah. the, th the thing that stuck out to me the most though was that strange sky and i don't yeah. know i'm assuming that this is like part of the story that there's something wrong with the sky because it doesn't look normal but yeah it doesn't really explain that and so i just found it i, I was like you know I don't know what to think of that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely, they were going for a post-apocalyptic vibe. It could be kind of a Matrix, they scorched the sky kind of thing. Yeah. But we know that it was us that scorched the sky. Or, like, there was, like, a nuclear blast. Something did all this damage. I don't know. The actual, like, it's weird. It's got, like, the least good of both worlds. Like, you'll see there's, like some vertical jittering going on with this is being super nitpicky from a technical standpoint but right. there's like some really obvious uh slicing going on the art did not try to hide where these slices are at all right and especially some of the later generation mega drive games the artists got really good at making gorgeous looking parallax and clouds where there was technically there had to be that very strict slicing border but they just visually designed the cloud layers in a way that hit it really well i think this could be just a situation where they did want a very contra looking post-apocalyptic sky and they knew this was the right kind of texture but it wasn't pulled off as expertly as it could have been to not only match the proper style but also not have kind of i'll call I, I it banding uh, yeah i would say that's the only major criticism i have yeah. of this intro cutscene yeah, because yeah. it lingers on this shot for so long yeah. that you can't help but just notice that sky because mm. uh, everything else here is really beautiful uh, you know i love the way it all looks i love the little character animation going on you know yeah. it's um, yeah that's really nice yeah 
really nice. Again, a lot of parallax. Uh, the Mega Drive would be hard pressed to pull it off. It is scrolling slowly, so they might be able to s figure out a software way to do it, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, really nice. Not only visually did they match the style, and they certainly matched the aesthetics with the color limitations and stuff like that as the old 16-bit consoles, but even just the feeling of the storytelling and all of that stuff, it feels really legit, like really nostalgic, great job. Same thing with the way they handled the... Um, the title screen and stuff so mm -hmm. so yeah th that's an interesting there's a very subtle effect in those portraits to make it look like it was on a monitor so did there we go uh there's like this kind of scan line interference kind of thing where it's uh, right and that can be done on things like mega drive on a given layer very easily where in actually in the desert level of this game they use it to great effect to get the heat wave effect in the background it's also great for water and it's the same technology that's used in the classic street fighter 2 game for that it's called line scrolling where you're scrolling every horizontal line of the floor graphic at a separate speed to give it that 3d effect you can do right. the same thing and shift pixels over to get heat wave effects and things like that. So that's the kind of effect they're going for. But the way it's done, I have a feeling it's it looks sub-pixel. So that also uh, could not be done in hardware. Yeah, it, it, lo it looks like yeah, someone made the effect. Exactly. Like it, you could I approximate think what you're it. talking about yeah. what what would be done on the actual Mega Drive would look a little nicer because like I didn't mind it on the portraits but when it gets to that map it starts feeling a little too much like yeah. on the screen effect thing I mean it's not too bad I suppose I love the rendering of that map but yeah. that effect was it's like it could have been a little more subtle I guess if it was right. dialed back a little wouldn't bother my eyes as much but get to something we haven't seen yet so yeah another very classic mm -hmm. very uh, I think Super Contra on the Super Nintendo had levels like this and I I don't remember right. if Hardcore did it's been probably decades since I played Contra Hardcore but I did really like how they did I, I've never seen this in an actual 16-bit game and they could have where the uh, the reflection of the sun could easily be a sprite that's put when we get out of this tunnel. It's a long tunnel. <laughs> but there's the sun, and then there's a reflected colors of the sun there in the water. And it, of course, has yeah. to chase the sun. So even though the water is scrolling past, you've got the sun, and that could easily be handled with a couple of sprites right there, just set same to a goes, low priority. Yeah, yeah, same goes for the even the mountains, yeah. or, or really those objects like that stands out to me how they don't have a reflection at all because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there would be some darkness or something where they're going yeah. into the water but uh, you better. know like that's that's a little nitpicky because yeah. otherwise it is pretty nice uh, color scheme and just like you know it's got a cool look to it overall and, but i totally right. agree like if we were to pause this this would look so much nicer and more compelling if you had the reflection the other issue though is if you do add the reflection you'd want to fade it out really quickly for the old systems if you're going to parallax because right. the reflection would parallax too which of course would be completely wrong i think that's that's the only thing that bugs me about this one is it looks yeah. like those are just kind of sitting on the water yeah I'm uh, and it and it you know it turn it makes the water look more like sand or gravel right exactly yeah, yeah. especially because also it's not animated though like the waves they're scrolling mm -hmm. but they're not animated at all but i love the overall enemy designs they're not only great on their own right but they really match the uh kind of contra hardcore kind of world vibe uh i really like like you've got those basic more humanoid running general grunt enemies and then the right. more praying mantis ones where it looks like they came out of the same factory but they were just given praying mantis arms like yeah, they look yeah. cool and you know what i mean it um a good pretty quick way to add more variety to your enemies in not only the way they look but in their behavior um mm -hmm. yeah they all have that uh you know, they all came from the same factory, but, you know, they they have their own utility kind of, uh, yeah, exactly. you know, design to them. It's real cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked, I really liked how they did like an energy coupling, almost like a mini tractor beam thing to link each section of the train. And mm -hmm. I think they built that into the gameplay where if you fall and hit that, you get hurt. And I think enemies might die too if they hit that. Nice. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. By the way, there's that ninja-style playing character that starts out locked in the game. We couldn't select him, but he looks really cool. Uh, I did I did want to point out this enemy, this boss here. 
They did a really good job with the design, even though it's very simple, of having a sense of three-dimensional depth to the boss. Like, you could see the circular uh, hole thing that it's peeking out of, like this kind of right. beam head thing. And they've got this nice, mostly in shadow, rim-lit back that keeps that circular feeling. And most of the bosses are very well rendered, where there's a very specific sense of depth. But there was one right. boss in this game that felt really flat, and I'm going to have to scan around. Feel free in the meantime to talk about anything. Yeah, that that boss that we just looked at, I mean, I think that's a good example of taking a very simple concept, but still making it very attractive. Exactly. You know, like, like exactly. kudos to the artist for yeah. uh, pulling that off, you know. All right, I found the flat-looking boss, so I want to show the difference, and I'm skipping ahead now. So there can be a design issue where you're worried so much about texture that you're not worried when you're rendering as much as you should be about depth and where in the actual physical three-dimensional space any particular thing is. So right, you can see yeah. any one element of this boss looks relatively well rendered in a 3D sense. In fact, those back fangs here of this mouth-like mm -hmm. thing, they did a great job with the perspective and the lighting to really give that, that open spherical kind of look. But the way these things all kind of go together looks like a collage, and it yes. becomes much harder to tell. These things are in such high contrast, this stuff down here is supposed to be closer to you by quite a bit which you'll see when it right. animates but you can't really tell and like they could have made things fade into shadow a bit more and then hit some highlights here and stuff like that to yeah really... I, I agree with the just the lighting on it is the big issue that would make it creepier too like exactly the, you know what i mean like you're more enveloped like this even yeah. feels like you're inside a living thing you know what right. I mean? like yeah. this cave back here and they did a great job with the sense of depth here but that's part of the problem there's a strong sense of depth to the rest of the cave and then the entire boss feels like a really flat overlay layer like the old theater cardboard cutout stuff even if every component is drawn well and drawn just as high quality of the rest of the game, if you don't look at and kind of self-critique, or if there's not an art director, to critique everything used as a whole in the final scene, there could be a drop in the overall appeal and visual quality because everything wasn't kind of tweaked after the fact. Once you see it all on screen together, working the way it needs to, that boss looked really cool. Great job on the kind of mechanical design of the legs and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that was awesome, yeah. That just looked really good. See, these clouds look much better, but they're also cheating from a Mega Drive right, standpoint. Yeah. Like, literally, they're overlapping each other. So this is a level that would have to be changed quite drastically. Well, um, and that's that's the thing. Like, if they're going to cheat here, why not just do it on that first one? You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was a cinematic cutscene. But yeah, some parts of the game are following the rule like they're emulating the hardware limit and then in other levels it seems like they went screw that we just want it to look as nice yeah. as possible and maybe worry about the port later and whatever changes they need to make which again keep in mind everyone the way a game looks the way it plays every element of the game how long the game is all of this stuff is also it's not just about how good and how skilled and how knowledgeable the team was, it's how much time did they have to do everything. There's always yeah. a time limit. Someone after the fact can criticize the hell out of everything, but uh, they did an amazing job achieving a across-the-board AAA quality game. The gameplay is great. The design is great. The storytelling seems really good, especially for like a hardcore action game that usually the story is going to be very light anyway. But I also yeah. really like their simple but really well done like architectural and environment design mm -hmm. like it's got that great aesthetic of like what the future was made to look like in all the 90s and early 2000 movies it's yeah, not and, overdone and it, yeah and it has it has a way too of like as the levels progress you know you're seeing these wildly different places but yes, they all yeah. have the same aesthetic but yeah. it's mixed up well enough where it doesn't 
you never feel like you're in the same place twice exactly. or anything. So yeah, it doesn't get boring, but it feels like a cohesive world and cohesive art style for the game. I think that's pretty much. I didn't want to skip all the way to the final boss and say anything about that. It's very reasonably priced, and we got it uh, yeah. during a uh, uh, Steam sale. So. Uh, definitely worth grabbing. Definitely very high quality all the way across the board. Um, definitely, yeah. A, yeah. a true um, modern successor to the Contra series. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Seeing and playing what I have so far, I think this is absolutely on par with the two pinnacle uh, con- 16-bit Contra games, uh, Super Contra on the Super Nintendo and uh, Contra Hardcore on the Mega Drive. Like, I don't see yeah. any dip in quality visually storytelling music sound and gameplay most importantly and it feels like you know it feels like an absolute legit heir to the throne so to speak of like the next great triple a contra style game agreed yeah so but anyway we should leave it there and wrap this video up and uh, thanks very much for watching If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description and we'll see you soon.